I don't know about y'all, but ancient structures are some of the most fascinating things to me in the world. Like how they design them, where they design them. And the fact that some of them are still standing, have weathered the years, the, the storms, the weather, the elements, everything. So we're going to check out some of them today. Let's go. There are a lot of mysterious things in this world. And among them are mysterious ancient structures that are built in places no one imagined. From floating cities to palaces on cliffs, here are 20 unexplained ancient structures built above. Number 20. Floating cities in China. If you are active on the internet around 2015, perhaps you've seen articles and clips about alleged cities floating in the sky above Jiangxi and Foshan, China. You see, that year, a mysterious cityscape was seen by countless locals hovering over a Chinese city. Residents were initially alarmed by what they saw, but experts were quick to offer explanations. You see, rather than an actual building, the age-old phenomenon responsible for this floating city is known as a mirage. Historically, similar phenomena have been recorded across various cultures and are often interpreted as omens or spiritual visions. And while these sites what I was thinking or a lost city or something like showing itself or giving us clues. Sightings have been intertwined deeply with local lore. Most of the time, these floating cities are created by a superior mirage or an upward projecting mirage. This is similar to a Fata Morgana, the phenomenon that causes sailors to see ships as if they're floating in the skies. But how does this phenomenon occur? Well, to get a Fata Morgana, you need cold, dense air near the ground with a layer of warmer air above it. This inversion in temperature causes light rays to bend, tricking our eyes into seeing objects as higher than they really are. This might have been why residents saw a city high up in the sky as if it was floating on cloud nine. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19, Deborah Damo. Deborah Damo is a flat-topped mountain. But this name is also used to refer to a 6th century monastery located in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. Sitting at an elevation of 7,270 feet, this mountain is among the highest locations in the country. Now imagine atop this elevation is the Monastery of Debradamo, which is only accessible by a rope up a sheer cliff that's 49 feet high. This ascent isn't for the faint heart. So, how are we getting up that mountain? I know y'all ain't gonna say that rope. Ain't no way. Hearted, but it's been the sacred gateway for pilgrims and monks for over 1,400 years. After all, the hike and the climb up would lead them to one of the oldest monasteries in the world, believed to have been founded in the 6th century by Abuna Aragawi, one of the nine saints who came from Ethiopia from the Eastern Roman Empire to spread Christianity. Legend has it that Abuna Aragawi ascended to the plateau with the help of a serpent sent by God, which acted as his rope. Today, visitors and monks still make a similar ascent, though with the help of a leather rope held in supervised by the monks above. That's why climbing up the monastery using a rope is significant. There are claims that deep within the Debra Damo is the elusive Ark of the Covenant. However, this claim was never verified. Now that definitely defies all logic right there. Wow. For the monks who live here, Debra Damo is a place of seclusion and meditation devoted to the same routines and rituals that have been practiced for centuries. Another interesting thing about this monastery is that women aren't allowed to enter, a tradition that's been followed since its inception. And yet, despite the struggles to reach it, every year on the feast day in St. Aragawi, pilgrims from all over Ethiopia and beyond climb up the ancient rope to participate in the celebrations. Number 18, Foo Fighters. During the height of World War II in the 1940s, pilots from various Allied forces began reporting strange glowing objects following or approaching their aircraft. These were not enemy fighters or known aircraft. They were something else entirely. The name Foo Fighters was coined by the US 415th Night Fighter Squadron, and it was inspired by a then popular comic strip. Reports surrounding these quote-unquote fighters were quite similar. They were glowing orbs that could outmaneuver and outpace any known aircraft, appearing out of nowhere and disappearing just as quickly, often without any physical interaction. These objects varied in size, shape, and color, from fiery orange to metallic silver. 
Pilots described them as balls of fire that could change direction at high speeds and seemed to play a game of cat and mouse with their aircraft. Now you're probably thinking that this is yet another hoax, but the thing is, these balls of fire were observed by credible and highly skilled military personnel from various allied countries, including the United States, Britain, and France. In fact, the sightings were frequent enough to warrant serious military investigation. In the end, we never figured out exactly what they were. Some thought they might be secret enemy technology, perhaps a new weapon developed by the German forces. Others speculated they were a natural atmospheric phenomenon, or even psychological warfare. Despite investigations, no conclusive evidence was found to explain their origins. And with Foo Fighters not showing any intent to harm aircraft, they were eventually left alone. As the war ended, so did the frequency of these sightings. But they remained a significant part of UFO lore. Number 17. Hermitage of San Columbano Perched halfway up a sheer cliff face in Trembileno Rovereto, Italy, is the Ermo de San Columbano, or the Hermitage of San Columbano. The story goes that the history of this place dates back to the year 753. It was said that... Look at how that is built into the mountain. Look how that... Like, I couldn't... I couldn't I'm trying to imagine myself sleeping in there and just knowing that one loose rock or boulder or something can just come down and come through the roof at you. Like, I couldn't be in, I, even if not sleeping, just being there would make me nervous. That the Hermit of San Columbano first arrived at the cliff. It was noted that at the time, a terrifying dragon once lived in a cave beneath the cliff, wreaking havoc on the local population. Columbano confronted and defeated the dragon, and the grateful locals built the hermitage at this spot as a sign of respect and devotion. However, this legend was likely created by the first hermit monks from the nearby monastery of Bobbio. With the hermitage located on the cliffside, accessing San Columbano is quite an adventure. Visitors must trek along a path that cuts through the forest and ascend a steep staircase carved directly into the rock. The entrance is guarded by a Romanesque-style church portal that leads into a small chapel. Inside, the air is cool and filled with the scent of incense and aged stone. Despite its ancient origins, the hermitage was inhabited by monks until the 18th century, after which it fell into disrepair. It wasn't until recent decades that efforts were made to preserve and restore this hidden gem. Today, the hermitage is not just a religious site, but also a cultural landmark. Number 16. 1566 Celestial Phenomenon over Basel Now this isn't exactly a structure, but more so of a phenomenon. On August 7, 1566, the townsfolk of Basel witnessed something that would be discussed for centuries, several celestial objects that gathered in the skies. According to the detailed chronicling by Samuel Cochus, a student at the University of Basel, the townspeople observed numerous large black globes moving at high speed in the air, clashing and merging with each other in the skies. Incredible displays of red and black smoke accompanied these sightings. Sounds horrifying, doesn't it? What's more chilling is that this phenomenon allegedly lasted for several hours and left the observers completely baffled and terrified. People were unsure whether this was a sign from the heavens, a bad omen, or simply a natural celestial event they did not understand. However, the 16th century and more recent years were rife with superstition and religious fervor. That's why most unexplained sightings were interpreted as divine or demonic signs. Kochu's account described how the globes eventually vanished, but the impact of what was seen lingered much longer in the community. The phenomenon provoked numerous discussions and debates among local scholars, theologians, and astrologers trying to interpret the event. Many saw it as a premonition or warning of God's displeasure, linking it to the social and religious upheavals of the time, especially considering that this was the period of the Reformation. However, experts today believe that what occurred on that fateful day on August 7, 1566, is a case of ball lightning, a meteorological event that, while rare, is considered perfectly normal. It's possible that the people at the time had exaggerated recollections of what happened due to collective panic and hysteria. Happens. With that being said, we might never know what really happened that day, as eyewitness accounts might not accurately describe what went on. Number 15. Machu Picchu. 
Nestled high above the sacred Urubamba River Valley at an impressive altitude of 7,970 feet is Machu Picchu. Built in the 15th century under the reign of the great emperor Pashakuti, this complex served as a royal estate to the Inca elite. Its strategic location was part of its defense strategy, hidden from below and nearly invisible among the mountain peaks. In this place, the precision of the stonework is so fine that you can't help but wonder how the Incas constructed such flawless structures without modern tools, or even the wheel. There's even a legend that claims that the Inca had the capability of connecting with the spirits of their ancestors. In fact, Machu Picchu itself is a mystery. We still don't know why exactly this city in the clouds was constructed in the first place. Some believe wow. it was a religious sanctuary. Others think it might have been an astronomical observatory. And some even suggest it was a secluded retreat for the Inca emperor and his guests. Whatever its original purpose, it was abandoned during the Spanish conquest and remained forgotten until the ruins were rediscovered in modern times. Number four. I like it because of the benefit of like protection, like, and not in the sense of it, the walls protect you. It just, you see people coming at you before they get there. You know, you, you can, you can be alerted before things get to you, be prepared for, be ready, everything that you need being high up at those elevations and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, I like that. 14. Acoma Pueblo. Perched atop a breathtaking 367-foot sandstone mesa in New Mexico, and if you're from the region, perhaps you've already heard about this before. Acoma Pueblo is also known as the Sky City. This place was first settled in around AD 1100, and was home to Native American cultures. With its roughly 250 structures made of adobe, a mix of earth, water, and straw, Acoma Pueblo appears almost as a natural extension of the mesa itself. According to oral history, the Acoma people believe they were led to this site by their spiritual guides, with signs indicating that this lofty mesa was to be their sanctuary. The spiritual significance is palpable as you walk the dusty streets past the San Esteban del Rey mission, a striking Catholic mission built in the early 17th century. The mission, built under the direction of Spanish missionaries, required considerable labor from the Acoma people to haul mm. soil and water up to steep mesa. Yet, the church stands today as a symbol of the blending of Acoma and Spanish influences, housing significant religious artifacts and traditional Acoma pottery. Today, tourism plays a vital role in the Pueblo's economy with guided tours offering insights into Acoma's rich history, culture, and traditions. These tours not only educate visitors, but also ensure that the heritage and the stories of the Acoma people continue. If you ever go see it, though, make sure you dress for warm weather, bro. It looks hot. Like, I'm getting hot just looking at this. Continue to be passed down to future generations. Goodness. Number 13, the City of Victory. Vijaya Nagara, meaning City of Victory, was more than just a city. It was once the capital of the mighty Vijayanagara Empire, which dominated South India from the 14th to the 17th century. Founded by the legendary brothers Harihara and Bukha Raya in 1336, the empire was established with the guidance of the sage Vidyaranya. It was a bulwark against the invasions from the northern sultanates, and it played a crucial role in preserving Hindu religion and culture during turbulent times. The city of Vijayanagara itself was a marvel of its time praised by travelers from around the globe, especially for its advanced urban planning and vibrant marketplaces. Imagine a city so rich that diamonds and rubies were sold on the streets, an architecture so grand that it left visitors spellbound. The city was a melting pot of cultures, attracting traders, travelers, and scholars from across Asia and Europe. Its richness is easily reflected by the entire complex. However, the grandeur of Vijayanagara did not last forever. The city met a tragic end in 1565 at the Battle of Talakota, where it was besieged and destroyed by the combined forces of the Deccan Sultanates. What was once a bustling metropolis was left in ruins, which still stands to this day. Today, it's known as Hampi, and is considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site, attracting thousands of visitors from all around the globe. Number 12. Sigiriya. Lion Rock, or Sigiriya, is a massive rock column nearly 650 feet high, rising imposingly above the surrounding plains. Now atop this column is a fortress with a rich history. The rock fortress was built in the 5th century by King Kasyapa, 
who sought a secure location due to fears of retaliation from his brother, whom he had wronged to claim the throne. The climb to the top is not for the faint-hearted, with over 1,200 steps to conquer. As you ascend, you'll encounter the mirror wall, once Whoa. polished so finely that the king could see his reflection as he walked by. Today, it's covered with verses scribbled by past visitors, dating back to the 8th century. Yes, even people in ancient times left behind graffiti. Halfway up the rock, you reach the famous Siguria frescoes. These stunningly preserved paintings depict celestial maidens that are thought to be either representations of Cassiopeia's queens and concubines, or goddesses blessing the king and his palace. But perhaps the most iconic feature of Siguria is the Lion's Gateway, halfway up the rock. Once oh. guarded by a massive... I didn't even notice, like, the pause here. Did y'all notice that? Look right here. You see where my cursor is? I didn't even notice that at first. I was look too busy looking at the people come down these stairs and everything and looking up here and stuff. I didn't until he said lion is when I noticed the pause. Wow. Brick lion, of which only <laughs> the paws remain. This gateway is thought to have symbolized the king's majesty and power. Passing through the lion's paws, visitors ascend the final staircase to the summit, where the remains of the palace await. Number 11. Meteora Monasteries Imagine massive stone pillars uh -huh. reaching heights of over 1,300 feet, no. and on top of each stone pillar is a monastery balanced precariously on the summit. Sounds impossible, doesn't it? But that's essentially what the Meteora Monasteries are. Originating in the 14th century, these monasteries were established by monks who sought solitude and safety from political upheaval during the Byzantine era. The first hermits arrived here, finding refuge in the caves and fissures of the rocks. However, it wasn't until later in the 14th century that the monastic community of Meteora began to flourish, with more than 20 monasteries built during its peak period. Initially, the monks climbed these steep rocks using ladders lashed together, or by hauling themselves up in nets, which were pulled up by the monks residing above. Supplies and new monks were hoisted up in the same precarious manner. You might be thinking, why choose such an inaccessible place? The answer lies in their quest for spiritual ascent and the desire to live closer to God, away from worldly sins. Today, six of these ancient monasteries are still functioning and open to the public. Each monastery has its own unique charm and history. For example, the Great Meteoron Monastery, the largest and oldest, was founded in the mid-14th century by Saint Athanasios the Meteorite, who was instrumental in establishing the organized monasticism of Meteora. Would you dare take the hike to visit these monasteries? Let me know in the comments down below. No. Number 10. No. Petra. Yes, that massive structure is a building carved directly into sandstone cliff faces. This is the greatness of Petra, the rose-red city half as old as time itself. This archaeological structure is located in the rugged mountains south of the Dead Sea. Carved directly into vibrant red, white, and pink sandstone cliff faces, Petra was once the thriving capital of the Nabataean Kingdom from around the 6th century BC. The Nabataeans were known for their incredible skill in water management, architecture, and their prowess in trade, turning Petra into a crucial hub for silk, spice, and other trade routes that linked China, India, and Southern Arabia with Egypt, Syria, Greece, and Rome. Entering this city is like going back in time. It's a sprawling city filled with hundreds of intricately carved buildings, tombs, baths, funeral halls, temples, and a Roman-style theater capable of seating 3,000 people. According to legend, Petra is not only where Moses struck a rock with his staff, causing water to gush forth, but also where bandits hid the Nabataean king's treasure in the giant urn atop the treasury's facade. These legends contribute to Petra's historical significance. Number 9. Hanging Temple of Hangshan Located near Mount Hang in Shanxi Province, China, a staggering 246 feet above the ground is the Hanging Temple of Hangshan. Built more than 1,500 years ago during the Northern Wei Dynasty, this structure is one of the most precariously placed ancient structures in the country. But why build a temple in such an extreme location? Legend has it that only an area with such difficult access could be sufficiently quiet for meditation. Moreover, the temple structure, protected from floods, snow, and rain by the overhanging cliff. Every time I look at this temple, right, and I see it, and I look at those like little pillars or whatever, those little, they almost look like sticks 
holding this thing up, man. It just looks fragile. Like, and then I see the, the people in the picture or the video walking across, and I'm like, man, I hope that thing is strong enough to hold. Like, I hope it's like this stuff is on stilts or something like that. And you just look at it, and you're just like, how? And I think that's the beauty of it. Just not knowing how, but it's been there for ages. Look, this helped preserve its wooden beams and intricate architecture through the centuries. The Hanging Temple is unique not only for its location, but also for its embodiment of unity among different Chinese spiritual traditions. This temple is one of the only places in China where you can find Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism all worshipped under one roof. The coexistence of these three major philosophies is reflected in the temple's 40 halls and pavilions, connected by a dizzying network of passageways. Each of these halls contains statues and icons dedicated to deities from each faith, with a particular emphasis on Buddha, Laozi, and Confucius, considered the great sages of their respective doctrines. Visitors who want to explore the hanging temples must ascend narrow staircases carved into the mountain, leading up to the precarious pathways that aren't really for the faint-hearted. Number 8. Batala Palace Standing at an impressive 13 stories and containing over 1,000 rooms is the Patala Palace, nestled high up in the Himalayas, particularly on the red hill of Lhasa, Tibet. Built in the 17th century by the 5th Dalai Lama, the Patala Palace was constructed on the foundations of an earlier fortress built by King Songsten Gampo in the 7th century. It serves as the Winter Palace of the Dalai Lamas, but it also holds spiritual significance. You see, it's said that the site holds sacred significance due to the presence of a spiritual cave that was considered a meditation retreat for Emperor Songsten Gampo. This cave, deep within the palace's labyrinth, is still preserved and revered as a holy site, believed to be imbued with his spiritual legacy. Despite its historical and political complexities, Batala Palace remains a pilgrimage site for thousands of Buddhists each year. Number 7. Paro Taksan. Paro Taksan, also known as the Tiger's Nest Monastery, is a breathtaking sacred site in Bhutan. Built in 1692, the monastery is perched on the edge of a steep cliff about 3,000 feet above the Paro Valley. But the story of this palace starts much earlier, with a legend that sounds like something out of a fairy tale. According to Bhutanese folklore, Guru Padmasambhava, also known as Guru Rinpoche, flew to this location from Tibet on the back of a tigress. This tigress was believed to be his consort, transformed into a flying tiger to transport him. Upon arriving, he meditated in a cave here for three months, battling local demons and emerging victorious. This event is considered the foundation of Buddhism in the country. Now to reach this monastery, you'd need to hike for about two to three hours on a single trail. There's no cable car, and there are no shortcuts either. However, the view of the monastery makes the trip worth it. Speaking of the view, I wonder if, I wish there was a way we can go back, like, see, hold on. Or cuts either. However, the view of the monastery. I wish there was a way we can, like, snapshot back in time to see, did this mountain look like this when this was being built? You know what I mean? That says a lot to me. That the boldness to do it looking like this. In my mind, I'm thinking it didn't look like this. This is just over time that it got maybe this narrow beside the structure that they built or, you know, maybe it was the mountain was, you know, more full. It was it wasn't a slope right there. Maybe it was further out and just over time it's come in. I don't know, but I wish there was a way you could snapshot back in time and see that that would that would answer a lot of questions I have. <laughs> I mean, or he makes the trip worth it. Number six. Zunantinich. Zunantinich is a term that translates to stone woman in the Mayan language. Set on a leveled hilltop, this archaeological site is one of Belize's most easily accessible and impressive Maya structures in the region. The core of Zunantinich covers approximately one square mile, consisting of six major plazas surrounded by more than 26 temples and palaces. Now, it was said that this place was named after the ghost of a woman who, according to local legend, began appearing in the late 19th century. Witnesses say she's dressed entirely in white, has fire-red glowing eyes, and vanishes into the walls of El Castillo. This majestic structure stands at a staggering height of 130 feet, making it the site's most prominent structure. 
Within these ruins are also the remnants left behind by the Maya people. You see, within this high point are friezes and carvings depicting ancient gods, ceremonies, and the Tree of Life, which has roots deep in Mayan cosmology. These friezes are some of the most best preserved examples of Maya art in Belize. And so, to this day, Zanantinich continues to be one of the most significant sites in the region. Number 5. Quela. Perched in the clouds of northern Peru is Quela, also known as the Machu Picchu of the north. Quela was built in the 6th century by the Chachapoyas, also known as the Warriors of the Clouds, a civilization known for their fierce independence and impressive architectural skills. Quela is nothing short of impressive. This massive stone structure was built without the aid of modern tools at a dizzying height of over 9,840 feet above sea level. The fortress also stretches over 1,960 feet in length and includes more than 400 buildings within its colossal walls, which in some places reach up to 65 feet high. For this reason, reaching this site is quite an arduous journey. The fortress has only three narrow entrance gates, each an architectural funnel designed to make any attack extremely difficult. Invaders would have found themselves squeezed into tight, vulnerable lines, easy targets for defenders stationed above. Despite its grandeur and historical importance, Quelop remained relatively unknown to the outside world until the late 19th century and has only recently begun to attract the attention it deserves. In 2017, the launch of a cable car system opened up easier access to visitors providing breathtaking views of the site. Number 4. Skellig Michael Skellig Michael is a rocky island off the coast of County Kerry, Ireland. Even from afar, this twin pinnacle crag looks like something straight out of a fantasy. This stunning UNESCO World Heritage Site, although seemingly barren, once provided shelter to early medieval monks who sought solitude and spiritual connection. According to legend, the island was chosen by St. Fionnan for its monastery because of its remote location, which provided a perfect retreat from worldly distractions. The monks lived a life of severe simplicity and meditation, battling the natural elements and surviving on a diet primarily sourced from the sea and the sparse vegetation available on the island. The monastery was continuously occupied until the 12th century, when changing climatic conditions and the increasing frequency of Viking raids made life on Skellig Michael impossible. The monks eventually abandoned the island, leaving behind the monasteries they had created. And so aside from its breathtaking view and incredible landscapes, Skellig Michael, also known as Great Skellig, is best known for its well-preserved monastic outpost of the early Christian period that dates back to around the 6th century. The monks who inhabited this island constructed beehive-shaped huts made from stones, precisely fitting them together without the use of mortar to withstand the harsh, windy weather. And to reach this place, the journey is quite long and perilous. Visitors must take a boat ride and climb over 600 steps carved into the craggy rock to reach the summit. If you're terrified of heights and are weak in trekking, reaching the monasteries might prove to be a challenge. If you're interested in visiting, you should know that Skellig Michael is a protected site with limited access to preserve its delicate environment and archaeological integrity. Number 3. Nestorian Church The Church of the East also known as the Nestorian Church, is one of the most significant churches. The organization originated after significant theological disputes within the religion. You see, the church got its alternate name, Nestorian, from Nestorius, a bishop of Constantinople who advocated for a view of Christ that was deemed heretical by the mainstream church at the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD. Nestorius claimed that there is a separation between the human and divine natures of Jesus Christ. While that might not sound like the controversy it was made out to be for most uh -huh. people, this very stance led to his exile and the eventual branding of his followers as Nestorians. The church withstood challenges until the 14th century, as it succumbed to the rise of Islam, Mongol invasions, and internal conflicts. However, its legacy endures through its contributions to Christian theology. Today, the churches built by Nestorians are still scattered all over the globe including this ancient church half buried on top of the mountains of Turkey. It might be nothing but crumbled ruins today, but its significance will forever be remembered. Number 2. Rupit Monastery In the village of Rupit, nestled in the heart of Catalonia, Spain, is a monastery sitting atop a rocky outcrop overlooking the lush forests and hills of the Colsacabra region. 
This secluded spot has been a spiritual retreat for centuries, offering solace and sanctuary to those who walk its sacred grounds. However, one wouldn't be able to reach the monastery easily, as the journey here requires a trek up Catalonia's landscapes. The origins of- And over these little rickety bridges as well. <laughs> That's over little bodies of water and rocks and stuff like that too. So yeah, this ain't gonna be easy for you at all to make this trip. Of Rupert Monastery date back to the 11th century, though much of its current form was constructed in the 16th and 17th centuries. It was originally founded as a small hermitage, a humble structure dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Over the years, it grew in importance and size, evolving into the significant religious complex we see today, complete with a church, accommodations for pilgrims, and several outbuildings. And tied with this monastery is an interesting legend. You see, legend has it that the monastery site was chosen by divine intervention. It's said that a miraculous image of the Virgin Mary was discovered on this mountain and the monastery was built to honor this sacred finding, making this site significant to this day. And now, it's time for today's topic. A drone owner was testing their drone when they discovered a giant door in the sky. And by that, I mean a giant door seemingly tucked in and hidden away from view below the mountain peaks. Curious, the drone owner decided to inspect the door and hopefully control his drone within it. But the giant door was sealed shut. He was determined to find out what the door was and where it led, so he decided to take the trek the next day, only to discover that the door had disappeared. And so, he took this photo and posted it online, hoping that someone would know what it was. Could it be a hidden ancient complex? Or something more otherworldly? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 1. Cliff Palace Perhaps some of you are already familiar with this structure, yeah. Cliff Palace the largest cliff dwelling in North America. This massive dwelling is nestled within the rugged cliffs of Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado, and it's hard to wrap your head around how it was established in the first place. With over 150 rooms and more than 20 kivas or ceremonial structures, this site is incredibly massive, far too enormous for a settlement located precariously atop a cliff. Not to this, is, this, this place here is definitely on my list of places to go should I ever be in or visit Colorado, which I may be doing in the next few years. This is definitely one of the places I want to come to and check out, man. I think this is just wow. Just looking at this and y'all know my theory. We could be <laughs> headed back to living like this eventually. So seeing this type of stuff, seeing how they lived, how they survived. Yeah, I need to see this. To mention that the Cliff Palace was constructed around the year 1190, the settlement was created without the aid of modern tools. It was once home to approximately 100 people, but it likely served as a social and administrative site for a larger population within the region. What's more astounding is the fact that the people who built the Cliff Palace seemed to understand modern architecture, showcased by the Kiva's ventilation system. However, archaeologists believe Cliff Palace was only inhabited for about 100 years. By the end of the 13th century, the residents began to leave, possibly due to prolonged drought that made the region inhospitable. These places truly are wonderful. It makes you wonder just what ancient secrets we're yet to unlock.